We can't talk about motion without talking about work. Why? If we don't do work on something, it won't be moving. There's no way to get it moving. So what is work? Work is force applied through a distance. And so if you're moving in some direction, if you get something moving in a particular direction, and the force is in that direction, we'll make these both vectors, then the work done in moving something is just the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the distance or the force times the distance. However, like in this illustration, the force and the direction of motion are not perfectly in a line. Right? So you have to take into account that only part of the force is doing the work and the other part is not. And so you're going to use what's called a dot product. And dot products are really simple. So if we take D, say the work, is d dot f, right? This is our first vector product. There's a little dot in there. d dot f. Well, this is just multiplying the components together. So dx, fx. Now, work is a scalar. Work doesn't have direction. And what we get out of this is a scalar. The vector pieces disappear after the dot product. So the dot product is dx, fx plus dy fy plus dz fz. Now this, when they're not in alignment, is also equal to the magnitude of the two vectors times the cosine of the angle between them. Right? So magnitude of the two vectors times the cosine of the angle between them. Very often we'll just use this because when you're given the problem you're given the angle, right? You're given the angle and you know the magnitudes of the two vectors. And so we don't bother breaking it down into the different pieces. Uh, the way it would break down in this diagram is D is DX I hat, and that's it. F is FX, which is going to be F cosine theta. That's the X component, I hat plus f, that's the magnitude f, sine theta times j hat. All right. When we do the dot product, the x component, I'll just make that d, all right, d in the i hat direction, the x component, d times f cosine theta. It's what we have right here. All right. And the j component, well, what's the j component over here? It's zero. So zero times f sine theta, there's no contribution from the y component of the force because we're not moving in the y direction at all. All right, let me get this erased. The units of work are joules. So work is in joules, joules, which we use a J for. Um, and that comes from force, which is in Newtons, Newtons which we use an N for, and times distance, so force times distance. So a joule is a newton times a meter. What's a newton? A newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. That's a newton. Now, if you ever forget one of these more complex, so these are basic units, kilogram, you can't break it down anything other than, I mean, grams, which but it's not, it's a fundamental unit. Meters a fundamental unit. Seconds are a fundamental unit. If you ever forget, what is a Newton? Well then just go back to Newton's second law, F equals MA, all right? What's M? Well, that's mass, that's in kilograms. What's A? That's acceleration, that's meters per second squared, all right? So this gives us work in joules one joule is also 0 0.000239 kilocalories. Now here's one thing that there, when we get into this, and you're gonna have some problems around this, one kilocalorie, 1,000 calories in physics or chemistry are just one calorie 
in food. They don't want to scare you with your, with your chocolate bar and tell you you're eating 250,000 calories. So they defined a calorie with a capital C, whereas the physics calorie, the chemistry calorie, has a lowercase c. They find a calorie with a capital C that's a thousand times larger so that you eat a candy bar with 250 calories, not 250,000 calories. All right, on to the next slide.